October 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapters 11 and 12 from the Old Testament. A wind lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's temple that faces the east. There at the entrance of the gate, I noticed 25 men. Among them, I saw Jeazaniah, son of Azur, and Pelatiah, son of Benaniah, officials of the people. The Lord said to me, Son of man, these are the men who plot evil and give wicked advice in this city. They say the time is not near to build houses. The city is a cooking pot, and we are the meat in it. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, son of man. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and said to me, Say, this is what the Lord says. This is what you are thinking, O house of Israel. I know what goes through your minds. You have killed many people in the city. You have filled its streets with corpses. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. The corpses you have dumped in the midst of the city are the meat, and this city is the cooking pot, but I will take you out of it. You fear the sword, so the sword I will bring against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. But I will take you out of the city, and I will hand you over to foreigners. I will execute judgments on you. You will die by the sword. I will judge you at the border of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This city will not be a cooking pot for you, and you will not be meat within it. I will judge you at the border of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord, whose statutes you have not followed, and whose regulations you have not carried out. Instead, you have behaved according to the regulations of the nations around you. Now while I was prophesying, Pelatiah, son of Benaniah, died. Then I threw myself face down and cried out with a loud voice, Alas, Sovereign Lord, you are completely wiping out the remnant of Israel. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, your brothers, your relatives, and the whole house of Israel, all of them are those to whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, they have gone far away from the Lord. To us this land has been given as a possession. Therefore say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Although I have removed them far away among the nations and have dispersed them among the countries, I have been a little sanctuary for them among the lands where they have gone. Therefore say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When I regather you from the peoples and assemble you from the lands where you have been dispersed, I will give you back the country of Israel. When they return to it, they will remove from it all of its detestable things and all its abominations. I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. I will remove the hearts of stone from their bodies, and I will give them tender hearts, so that they may follow my statutes and observe my regulations and carry them out. Then they will be my people, and I will be their God." But those whose hearts are devoted to detestable things and abominations, I hereby repay them for what they have done, says the Sovereign Lord. Then the cherubim spread their wings with their wheels alongside them, while the glory of the God of Israel hovered above them. The glory of the Lord rose up from within the city and stopped over the mountain east of it. Then a wind lifted me up and carried me to the exiles in Babylonia, in the vision given to me by the Spirit of God. Then the vision I had seen went up from me. So I told the exiles everything the Lord had shown me. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you are living in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, because they are a rebellious house. Therefore, son of man, pack up your belongings as if for exile, during the day, while they are watching, pretend to go into exile. Go from where you live to another place. Perhaps they will understand, although they are a rebellious house. Bring out your belongings packed for exile during the day while they are watching, and go out at evening while they are watching, as if for exile. While they are watching, dig a hole in the wall and carry your belongings out through it. While they are watching, raise your baggage onto your shoulder and carry it out in the dark. You must cover your face so that they cannot see the ground, because I have made you an object lesson to the house of Israel. So I did just as I was commanded. I carried out my belongings, packed for exile, during the day, 
and at evening I dug myself a hole through the wall with my hands. I went out in the darkness carrying my baggage on my shoulder while they watched. The word of the Lord came to me in the morning. Son of man, has not the house of Israel, that rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? Say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. The prince will raise this burden in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel within it. Say, I am an object lesson for you, just as I have done, it will be done to them. They will go into exile and captivity. The prince who is among them will raise his belongings onto his shoulder in darkness and will go out. He will dig a hole in the wall to leave through. He will cover his face so that he cannot see the land with his eyes. But I will throw my net over him, and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, the land of the Chaldeans, but he will not see it, and there he will die. All his retinue, his attendants, and his troops, I will scatter to every wind. I will unleash a sword behind them. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them among foreign countries. But I will let a small number of them survive the sword, famine, and pestilence so that they can confess all their abominable practices to the nations where they go. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, eat your bread with trembling and drink your water with anxious shaking. Then say to the people of the land, This is what the Sovereign Lord says about the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel. They will eat their bread with anxiety and drink their water in fright, for their land will be stripped bare of all it contains because of the violence of all who live in it. The inhabited towns will be left in ruins and the land will be devastated. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, what is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? The days pass slowly and every vision fails. Therefore tell them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I hereby end this proverb. They will not recite it in Israel any longer. But say to them, the days are at hand, when every vision will be fulfilled. For there will no longer be any false visions or flattering omens amidst the house of Israel. For I, the Lord, will speak. Whatever word I speak will be accomplished. It will not be delayed any longer. Indeed, in your days, O rebellious house, I will speak the word and accomplish it, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Take note, son of man. The house of Israel is saying, the vision that he sees is for distant days. He is prophesying about the far future. Therefore say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, None of my words will be delayed any longer. The word I speak will come to pass, declares the Sovereign Lord. God, I always love finding all those nuggets that are in the Old Testament that are looking forward to the New Testament, looking forward to your son coming here on earth. And in uh, Ezekiel 11, right around uh, verse 17, 18 or so, uh, where you talk about when they return to it, they will remove from it all its detestable things and all its abominations. And I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them. I will remove the hearts of stone from their bodies and I will give them tender hearts so that they may follow my statutes and observe my regulations and carry them out. Then they will be my people and I will be their God. And I think about uh, the sermon that I heard today and we were talking about salvation and how, <laughs> how crazy awesome it is that when we've truly been saved that you give us this new heart and along with this new heart comes new feelings and new emotions and new actions and uh, just a completely new way of looking at things uh, so that we can carry out your statutes and your regulations so that we can reflect your glory we know that ultimately we will be changed so much that we are allowed into heaven um, because our perfection to the point that you need it to be will allow us to be there with you. But in the meantime, we know from the point of salvation to the point that we die here on earth uh, that you are constantly working on us. And I thought one of the most amazing things that 
uh, my pastor, Pastor Don said today was that you love us enough, that you love us so much that you're not willing to leave us the way you found us. So when we came to you and we repented of our sins and asked you to uh, come into our heart and be part of our lives and guide our steps and uh, that salvation and that new heart happened, right then and there, changes started happening. But we were a mess at that point. Up until then, our lives had been very sinful, uh, very intentionally sin-filled. Uh, it was all about us at that point. Uh, when you gave us salvation, uh, our lives changed. And it doesn't mean that we're sinless. <laughs> Far from it. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't need your son to have died on the cross for us. But, but we are... Um, free of anyone causing us to sin we are free of anything causing us to sin that when we sin it is now a choice uh, that we make in our lives and I think it's absolutely amazing that from that point of salvation you help guide us and strengthen us and, and teach us to become not only better people but more the people that you actually created uh, the people you created us to be with the heart that you originally gave us the mind you originally gave us uh, the passions the desires um, the things that we like even probably the things we don't like uh, that we're getting closer and closer to the person you created originally and we're getting closer and closer to that perfection although it won't ever be realized here on earth we're getting closer to that perfection of your son jesus christ God, I can't thank you enough for giving me a new heart. I, I am really constantly baffled, even after all these years, how I was able to live in my past life without this new heart. How I made the choices I did. How I'm even still here because of some of the choices I made. Um, and of course, I'm always stunned that you chose me to be, <laughs> chose me to be one of your children. That is completely baffling to me. And here you allow me to do uh, so many things in your kingdom for you. God, I want my, my heart to show the world that I am yours. That I am chosen. Not because it has anything to do with me. But because it has everything to do with you. I want them to see a changed heart. I want them to be able to look at my life in the past and look at my life now, my life before you and my life now with you. And I want people to be able to see a difference. Again, not because of something that I did, but because of everything that you have done for me. God, I so appreciate these, these kind of markers within the Old Testament of looking forward to our salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. And I truly pray that every day within my heart, I reach into my new heart and my new life that you've given me and make it better that day for what you need it to be, to reflect your glory and to help your kingdom. In your son's name I pray, amen.